Hi, my name is Travis Gishy, and welcome to this special edition of Haskell News from New York City. edition of Haskell News. I'm Trevor Mohawk. And I'm Travis Gishy. On October 23rd, the female hypnotist Crimson came to Haskell to perform. The show was about an hour long and consisted of students being put under hypnosis and placed in situational scenarios. Many of the students enjoyed the night's entertainment, and a few of the participants talk about their experience. Uh, hi, I'm Colton Purdy. Um, I don't really know what happened. I just was in the audience, and I ended up on stage, and everybody's laughing. So that's pretty much it. The only thing that I know is that uh, coming out of the hypnotism, uh, I felt really well rested. Um, it felt like I was in a state of sleep. Uh, my name is Richard Labrie, and I just got to watch the show. I didn't get to participate in it, but that was one hilarious showing. I hope she comes back again next year. Here at Haskell News, we would like to thank the students who participated in the show. On October 28th, Haskell News traveled to New York City to premiere a video they shot for the American Indian College Fund. American Indian College Fund paid for the lodging and airfare to and from New York. The video was well received by those in attendance. Here is the video. Over the last two decades, the American Indian College Fund has fulfilled the dreams and ambitions of many American Indian students seeking the fundamentals of higher education but don't have the financial means to do so. Take into consideration the tribal college student who not only has the responsibility of attending classes but has the responsibility of being a parent, or the potential student who comes from a family whose income is usually less than $14,000. The tribal college student profile is not the same as a mainstream college student as many are non-traditional students, usually older than 24 years of age and work part-time while attending school. Haskell student April Bullard is one parent who appreciates the scholarship. Let me pay my bills, pays for books, because when you're seniors, junior and senior level, you can't, they don't give you books anymore, so you have to pay for your own, and they're actually quite expensive. Um, and then it helps for child care with my daughter, so that way I can, because it's really, really expensive for a younger child to take her to daycare and stuff so helps in those ways that I can actually concentrate on like my classwork and stuff like that and not having to worry about what I'm gonna do tomorrow to take my daughter somewhere so tribal college students also use their education to help others just like Haskell alumni Burton Warrington who graduated and continued into the University of Kansas Law School all three and with a legal education I, I believe that I could help more than just one specific tribe or the community that I'm a member of, uh, I really think, you know, with a legal education, I can help in a more broad scope. I, I just can't say enough about what the college fund uh, has done for me in my educational career. By attending Haskell Indian Nations University student, Melissa Brewer says the education made her more aware of different tribes than her own. I decided to go to Haskell because I grew up in Lawrence, Kansas, and I got the opportunity to be a part of the Haskell community since. I was a small child, so it was just natural to come to Haskell, and it's also given me the opportunity to learn more about my culture and meet different people from other nations and learn about their traditions. Haskell student Mark Bullard shares how the American Indian College Fund helps him financially. American Indian College Fund, um, since Haskell is kind of it's kind of cheaper to go here, it's helped me um, help me pay my bills. Um, you know, I, I have an 18 month old child. And uh, it's helped, you know, help out with her, and uh, j you know, just focus more on school than, than um, working and stuff like that. So it's, it's helped out tremendous. 
These are just a few of the students the American Indian College Fund has assisted with scholarships. Thanks for your contributions, and we hope that you continue to help our Native nations in attaining higher education degrees. Yeah. Piramia. Maro. Piramiapi. Yeah. Palamia. November 3rd was Election Day, with many Haskell students turning out to vote at Coffin Complex. Douglas County uses Haskell's Coffin Complex as a voting station for Precinct 37 for Lawrence residents as well as Haskell students. The election was followed closely by many Haskell students, many of whom knew that their vote counted in this election. Okay. Physical harm to another student is usually not an issue on campus. Haskell reporter Maury Spayola has more on this. Bullying is seen on high school campuses, but is it a problem at Haskell? Around here, no, not really. Not on campus. It's pretty good here, I think. Bullying is defined as a form of intimidation and harassment. Haskell counselor Mark Randolph indicates there are no definitions in the policy book. One of the things we should educate ourselves on is to um, really clearly define what bullying is, what are the consequences and the various degrees, and I think all um, policies or rules or, li or laws should apply to everyone, every single person, and, and that way we might be more consistent on dealing with bullying. According to Students' Rights Coordinator, Eddie Lehman, there are no reports of bullying on campus this semester. But if you or any other student experiences any type of bullying, you can get help from the Haskell counselors. Mari Spala, Haskell News. The opening games for the men's and women's basketball team turned out a large attendance and had everyone cheering loud for them as they played games against Bethany College and Graceland University. Voters were in the same building. The men's and women's season openers against Bethany College and Graceland University went underway with a good crowd. The first game pitted the Haskell women's basketball team against Graceland University. This game got out to a dynamic start with the tenacious offensive maneuvers complements of the Haskell women's basketball squad. With the defense on point with its abrasive efforts, it all paid off for the Haskell women's team as they won the game against Graceland University with a score of 84-71. The men's game got underway with superior offensive moves made by the starting lineup at the start. The game went on back and forth between both teams as they made supreme defensive efforts on the court. Just when you think you've seen it all from the Haskell men's team, they surprise you with plays that have to be seen to be believed. With the collaborative moves made by the Haskell men's team and their aggressively fast-paced offense, the game was theirs with a last-second shot to win the game that put Haskell up 69-67. to Congrats. That about does it for this edition of Haskell News. My name is Travis Gishy. And I'm Trevor Mohawk. Be sure to check us out on MySpace.com. We now leave you with a small musical number performed by Jacob Dillon. Have a good day.